Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to go, uh, show you some of the um, the skills that I've picked up uh, again over recent weeks uh, as far as flying the attack helicopter goes. Um, so some basics, um, some things that are covered by a lot of people. I'm not going to go through the startup procedure. Um, I will go through some of the instrumentation um, in the helicopter and then I will look at um, the information that we see on the hood. And once I've gone through those, I'll go through a few little techniques um, that I've picked up flying that will hopefully help you get off the ground and enjoy this helicopter as much as I do. So with that, first of all, I will change your view so you can see the cockpit and then I'll explain some of the controls in here. Okay, so here we have the hood in the pilot seat at least. Um, so this is the uh, what I'm going to cover today, the, the piloting and flying the helicopter. So first things first, it's definitely useful to uh, get used to the controls that we see uh, in the cockpit. First of all, a big one down here to our left, we have the collective. So the top handle on the collective is uh, the combat collective. So this is going to control... Um, weapons basically um, and something else to remember uh, I'm just going to turn on the options for control hints and hopefully these will show up I don't know if they do um, but you can see there with control hints on when I grab the handle we can actually see what each of the controls on the handle does um, one of the big ones that people aren't quite sure about is countermeasures as the pilot and that's done on the combat collective so if you're the pilot um, and, and you want to control countermeasures you hold the combat collective you squeeze the trigger in and you see that with this the trigger squeezed in um, you see I get some different options one is pile on tilt and the other is to fire countermeasures Chat player. nice and easy the pylon tilt is when you have missiles on the on the pylons, uh, you can tilt the the pylon slightly up or slightly down depending on how you plan to use the heli. So if you're going to shoot from behind cover, um, you would tilt the pylons up. So holding the trigger again on the combat collective, you would hold the thumbstick down, and that would tilt the pylons up. And if you wanted to tilt the pylons down you would push up on the stick and that would tilt them down. So I can say up is good for shooting from behind cover. It gives that little bit of extra range firing at a, at a positive angle. And tilting them down is better for your run and gun. So maybe flying through with hydras, something like that. You're getting, um, you know, you're shooting more downwards basically, hitting the ground faster. Um, so that's your combat collective. Uh, you can also control uh, the soy without the trigger pressed so you can swap between screens basically which is soy and then the thumbstick controls um, the whichever sensor uh, you, you have uh, is sensor of interest so in the aircraft it's the thumbstick on the flight stick that controls the um, the, the soy, the, the targeting pod and things like that in the heli it's your left hand so the combat collective, the thumbstick controls the movement of the tads Underneath, down at the bottom here, we have the flight collective. Um, now, for taking off um, and, and you know, slow speed maneuvers, this is what you want to be using most of the time the flight collective. I find this a lot easier uh, to use because I can just rotate my wrist where it is, uh, whereas the combat collective, I feel like I actually have to lift my elbow to get that to, to full uh, power. But with the combat collective, we also get um, some controls on there. So the trigger uh, is the wheel brake. Um, we're used to that in the aircraft. Hover AP is to turn the autopilot on to, to hover. So that's your hover AP. And then your trim, the hat, the, the thumbstick, controls um, the yaw trim inputs or how much uh, the tail rotor is, is affecting the heli. Um, we will we'll see the trim indicator on the hood um, later, but worth remembering that the the yaw trim is down on the left-hand flight collective. 
The other trim that we will have as the pilot is on the stick. And this is to trim the blades. So the, the thumb stick, the hat switch, is to trim the blades. Oh, and that's on the flight control. Next, we've got the MFDs. Um, I don't really need to go through these too much. They are MFDs. We have them in all the aircraft. So you should be used to controlling those if you've flown any of the other aircraft. The other information that is worth noting is, first of all, our engines. There are two needles here at the moment. I can't actually turn an engine off uh, to stop an engine. Uh, but there are two needles. These needles should be in a resting position like this when the engines are running. If you have one needle that's dropped, that's because you don't have that engine running. We also have torque for the um, motors for the engine. And this is also rotor torque, I think. Or rotor speed, sorry. Um, so we've got the torque in the engine, we've got rotor speed, um, and we've got engine speed. Here we have the vertical speed indicator, your VSI, so how fast we are going up and down. And then lastly, uh, this is the arm button. So if you have a gunner and they leave for some reason, the gunner will have control of the uh, weapons. This button will be orange. If the gunner has control and that's the same the other way around if you're in the gunner seat this button is up here in the gunner seat uh, but if the button is yellow that means the other person has control so if you want control of the uh, weapon systems you just press arm once the button's red uh, you have control also this little panel up here is a very useful um, uh, computer so first of all we've got the autopilot very simple uh, follow your waypoint nav uh, we've got an autopilot hover, maintain altitude, head in and turn them all off. Very simple. What I do want to point out is the stat screen. This is really useful. If you're finding the helicopter isn't working as it should be or things like this happen, um, you can see very quickly on your stat screen what is going on. So I can see that both my engines are running. The tar uh, sorry, The engine speed is fairly low, however. It's in the green. Um, which means they're fine, they're running, uh, but the engine speed is very low. So that tells me straight away that the flight handled down, um, that you can't quite see it, but down to the uh, the left here, uh, is in idle. And that's just, I've got it in idle, so we don't have to listen to the engine scream. Uh, we can also see that the rotor speed is in the red. Um, so again, this is telling me, you know, that they're not turning fast enough for whatever reason. Uh, and again, I can see on here... Um, what that would be, whether I have an engine out or I'm in idle or something like that. You will also notice if there is an issue with the rotors, when you do try to power them up, we get a warning light here and the beeping, so we can't actually lift off. And then we've got torque, so um, sometimes you can over torque the motor, uh, the engine, sorry, and you will see the torque value shooting up in flight. Um, I've never actually had that be a major issue, but I will show you a bit later how to recover um, from certain issues in flight. Uh, again, a lot of the other instrumentation is very similar uh, to the aircraft, turning the APU on the battery, the radio, I don't need to go through much of this stuff. Um, we have a lights panel down here. Uh, up top we also have our HUD, our HMD power. Uh, helmet mount display, so if we turn this off, we have no HUD readout, so make sure we have that on as well. So just to show you as well, if I put the engine into flight, we see the, the torque creeping up because it's spinning the engines up. Once the rotor speed, uh, the engine speed and rotor speed get up, we should see the torque kind of level off and, and maybe even drop down a little. There we go. So the torque's dropped off now, it's, it's maintaining uh, speed it's not trying to accelerate and it's not putting more effort into the engine which is what your torque is it's it's rotary force so we saw there it, it built up and then our torque just dropped out if I tried to power up now we'd see that torque go up as well so I'm just gonna power down to idle again and that's pretty much it for the uh, the panel so let's swap over to my view and we'll take a look at the hood Okay, so here we have the the HUD view. Uh, I've zoomed in as much as I can, so I'm sorry if anything gets cut off. Um, first thing to show you, you can see the cross that's moving around in the middle of the screen. 
that is where the pilot is looking. If it's a solid cross, that is where you are looking. If it is a dashed cross, so the, if the lines are broken, that is where your either gunner or pilot, depending on who who you are, uh, that is where the other person is looking. So this can be helpful for pointing at targets and, and things like that. Um, up at the top, we have our heading, our magnetic bearing. And we can also see that on this line here. Uh, this is called uh, the artificial horizon, so that is where our theoretical horizon is. Uh, so that's useful to, to know if we are flying level and, and straight and, and what heading we are flying on. So again, up here it says we are flying at a heading of 208. And down here, these numbers represent those headings as well in tens. So this is 200, 210, 220. So right around this V is our heading. And this is about 208. So that is good for your navigation, the the horizon, the artificial horizon. And at the top, the heading readout. Over on the right hand side, here we have our altitude. I believe this is our current above sea level, but I'm just going to check. So we'll just come down here. What's my units? Sorry, we're in meters. So if I change that to feet, there we go. So we are 627 feet above sea level. This is our above ground height. So we are the, your radar height, effectively. So we are at zero feet where we are on the ground. And then these notches here is your VSI, your vertical speed indicator. So it's the same readout that we saw here earlier on. So again, we can see how fast you are going up or going down by having a quick check at the vertical speed indicator there. The line here, the five degrees, so this is your angle of attack indicator. That's five degrees. 10 degrees if we were to tilt back would come down and, and so on like you see in the plane. We have the same readout here. That's what uh, this device is doing. At the top left we have the weapons readout. So this will show you what weapon is currently armed. I am in free flight so I can't arm weapons. But this will show you what you currently have armed. Underneath that it will tell you how many rounds you have left. And then I believe in multiplayer, underneath that, it will tell you who has control of the weapon system as well. So we can see down here at the bottom, I have my pilot name. Over on the right is the gunner. If I had a gunner in here, it would give me a readout here. Uh, but that would also show up here on who has control of the weapons. Then below that is our airspeed indicator. Again, very similar for all the... Uh, all the other weapons, uh, sorry, all the other aircraft. Down at the bottom left, we have the collective indicator. So if I apply the collective, you see the uh, that's the collective indicator. In the middle, this large box is the um, range of motion, if you will, uh, for the for the optics optical system on the helicopter. The smaller rectangle is the viewing window for the TADS. So if I put the TADS on and set it to my head, you should see that as I move my head, you should see that square moving around. So this that small square is what you are actually looking at with TADS. And then the larger rectangle is how far the TADS has reached. So if I go to this point, you see we've got gimbal limit. Um, the, the, the rectangle hit the top, same as we go down, that's your limit um, for, the, for the viewing um, for the TADS. And then the ball, um, I think that represents the, the side to side input, the twist input. Um, so if I was to your right, this ball would veer off to the left depending on how much force I was uh, putting into the yaw. Down at the bottom right here, 
we have our trim indicator. Now this is very useful for the pilot. First of all, the vertical line, a solid vertical line, is your yaw input from the stick. So if I twist, that is me doing that on the stick. So that's yaw input. The solid dot is the stick input. Um, so if I push the stick forward, you see the dot goes up, pull it backwards, the dot comes down. Pull over to the left, pull over to the right, that's our stick input. The circle, if I move the dot away, you see the circle in the middle is the trim input. So if I was in flight, if I'm trying to fly and I notice my helicopter is constantly trying to roll to the right, I'd notice because the white dot would be over to the left like this. I would be constantly trying to correct it. And really what you should do there is move the circle, the dot should be in the middle and the circle should move. So that's your trim. So. Uh, there are other readouts that I'll use up here to show you this in flight, but down here this can be a good indicator. You see if I'm holding the dot off to the left to keep ste steady flight, then I need to pull the circle to the right so I can relax on my input, the pilot's input. Same applies to the other side. If I feel like I'm pulling a lot to the right, move the circle to the left. If um, you are trying to hover, and you feel like the helicopter wants to roll backwards all the time, then the circle goes up, and that's giving us forward um, action, and then backwards if the helicopter's nose is constantly trying to dip. The other indicator here is for the yaw trim. So if I just grab the flight stick, if I push the, uh, the thumb stick over to the left, you see the V going to the left. So that's now trying to turn the helicopter to the left. And then if I go the opposite way, the helicopter is now trying to turn to the right. So that's your yaw trim. Now, because when a helicopter tries to fly, the rotation of the blades, which is anti-clockwise, causes a, a clockwise motion in the helicopter. For every ac a action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So as the blades turn anti-clockwise, the helicopter wants to turn clockwise. That's why we have a tail rotor to counter that. The more you apply the collective, the more the helicopter wants to turn. You actually saw that as I threw the collective up then, the helicopter jumped up and turned to the right. So to counter that, you should always just put a little bit of left hand input to the... Um, forget the word already trim with a little bit of left hand input that means you're not having to twist the stick um, on, on takeoff as much so that's a very useful tip next in the middle here we have uh, another cross which is a representation of our helicopter from above so the top line is the front of the helicopter the bottom line is the back uh, the tip of the tail of the helicopter this is the left side of the helicopter, this is the right side of the helicopter. So if you were to look straight down at the helicopter, that's what this is representing. The circle represents the force on the helicopter's centre of gravity, um, which is a bit of an odd one to explain, but if, if I was in stable flight and I pushed the stick forward, you would see that circle lift up because the force on the center of gravity shifts forward on the helicopter. If I started to roll to the left, that circle would move to the left because the force on the center of gravity of the helicopter is pulling that way. So it's almost like which, like I say, which way it's trying to fall almost if you were to balance it on a pin. Um, which way the helicopter is trying to fall, that's what this circle is representing, the force on the center of gravity. Next, in flight, you will see a line coming off this, which is your, uh, your vector indicator, um, as seen from above. So if we were going in perfectly straight flight forwards, you would see a line come from the middle and stretch up. The faster you are going, the longer the line is. If you were flying forwards, however, and you had a bit of a, a twist, you were, you were doing the crab, you were, you were flying a little bit sideways, then that line would come off to the side, it would project to the side because even though your helicopter is pointing straight, you're actually kind of slightly drifting off to the side. 
So again, we'll see that in flight. So I think that's um, pretty much everything I can say about the HUD until we start flying. So let me get uh, everything set up so you don't have to look at this awful view. And, uh, and then we'll take off. Okay, here we are. That's a bit better. Uh, better view at least. So, to, to fly the helicopter, first of all, um, you've got to understand that helicopters just don't want to fly. Uh, you, you literally have to break, almost break physics to make helicopters fly. Uh, a normal fixed-wing aircraft, it just wants to go up. A helicopter wants to kill you. Now, before I take off, I need to make sure everything's uh, good to go. So I can see both engines are running, but my rotor speed is low. So I know that I need to get the helicopter into flight mode. So again, we'll just uh, wait till our rotors are in the green. Uh, there's no point trying to take off too early in the helicopter. If none of this is settled, the helicopter isn't going to fly as you expect. So we'll get everything settled. Again, I'm going to go for the um, the flight um, collective to, to start with to take off, unless I'm actually in stable flight um, or I'm in danger. Um, I'm usually on the flight collective, like I say, it's a lot easier to use. This motion here is, is purely in my wrist. I'm not mo uh, bending my elbow or anything. And it's just enough um, to get you flying as well. So we're ready to take off. I've got a little bit of left hand trim. What some people say is just yank the um, the collective and, and get up in the air. You really don't need to do that. The helicopter is about nice, easy, gradual movement. You see, I'm it coming up easy on the collective. I can pretty much just hover. Just nice, easy movements, just off the ground. You don't have to, to yank it, pull on it. Just treat it gently. And you can also see with my stick input on the trim, I'm not I'm not fighting, I'm not constantly, you know, beating against it. All I'm doing is just a little up, little down on the collective. We can see this uh, this little circle bobbing around, and some people call it the witch's hat, the velocity vector indicator. And basically this that is where my helicopter is going. So you can see now I'm, I'm kind of crab walking a little bit, but the vector indicator is over there. It's showing me I'm, I'm heading slightly that way. And if you remember, the line that I told you about here on the hood is also showing me um, my direction of travel. So if I just get up a little bit so I don't hit something, let's just lean over to the side. So you can see with, with traveling my indicator is showing me I'm kind of 45 degrees to the side and so is this line so if I wanted to hover for instance I would tilt the stick back opposite to where that line is going all I'm trying to do is shorten that line I'm not using hover autopilots or anything like that I'm just watching the line and I'm just pulling the stick back and again I can use the circle that I was saying before uh, you see as I tilt the helicopter back the circle goes backwards I tilt to the left, the circle goes to the left, tilt to the right, the circle goes to the right. So I can use that to try and get the, f the force on the helicopter in the opposite direction to that line and that will uh, help me bleed my airspeed. And you can you can see there, two, two knots. Um, it's relatively easy to, to hover this helicopter once you get used to you know the sensitive inputs. Um, the aircraft, you can just put it on full burn and go. The helicopter, you really do have to put in a bit more effort with the collective. Something else we can do is, I mentioned earlier that as you apply more collective, the helicopter wants to turn to the right, um, and that's because of the torque and, and, as I say, equal and opposite reactions and Newton and his laws. So we can actually use uh, that at low speed, and it's called torque steering. So as I'm just uh, flying along easy here, let's say I need to do a very fast turn. I know that if I pull up hard on the collective, the helicopter is going to want to turn to the right. So if I also yaw to the right, 
I can do a very fast turn that's called torque steering just level her up because uh, obviously it is a bit uh, jerky so I'll steady her up and again I can do the same thing if I need to turn to the left I can drop the collective and yaw to the left and that's called torque steering very uh, useful like I say at slow speeds um, when you're trying to maneuver and, and pop up over a mountain or something like that um, it can be very useful um, say getting a bit too close just torque steer it around something to to note with the with torque steering it doesn't work very well at high speeds and you will just make the helicopter unstable uh, so these are slow speed maneuvers, torque steering. You cannot really use yaw at higher speed, just like you can't really do it in an aircraft. The helicopter wants to go forwards um, at that point, so trying to turn it at 200, 150 knots, it's just not going to work. But as I say, at low speed, it can be very useful. Um, I can even do it in this building, hopefully. There we go nice and easy something else to note uh, let me just get a bit of height so I can try this one the, again the, the autopilot can be useful but it can also be a bit of a nightmare especially the hover autopilot so if I hit the hover autopilot button the button on the collective we now see on the hood we get a hover autopilot bar so the line in the middle is a straight hover if we go above that we're going up if we go down that we're going down go oh, sorry below that we're going down I can also use the vertical speed indicators remember this arrow this little arrow and this these markers are my vertical speed so at the moment I'm gradually going down there a little bit more collective get that arrow in the middle I'm in a, a stable hover using the autopilot as I said, it can be a bit weird because taking it off, sometimes the helicopter wants to do very strange things. So, put the power on. Let's say it does this. You drop the collective and then pick it back up when you're straight. So, recovery there. Uh, we, I see it a lot with people when they are and first starting flying. Uh, the helicopter sometimes just rolls over uh, for whatever reason. And people panic. And all you need to do is just drop the collective, get it uh, settled up, and gradually bring the collective on again. So it's probably going to be quite difficult for me to focus on the collective bow while I'm doing this, but I'll show you again. I'll flip her over, drop the collective, spin her back over, gradually build the collective back up. So that's uh, your nice, easy recoveries. Landing. Let's go for a landing. So when you are landing, First of all, the pilot should take over the tads. Uh, it's very difficult to land when you can't actually see where you're landing. So, to put your helmet in tads mode and set the sensor to colour and make sure you zoomed all the way out. So, our landing pad is right down there. So, first of all, I'm just going to drop my collective, nose down, lose all my height. But I'm going to pick up lots of speed doing this. So, I will show you how to arrest the helicopter as well. So I'm just bringing the nose up now, so you can see 100 knots, that's no good, so I'm going to tilt the nose up, and the collective is all the way down, and you see there my airspeed is bleeding, and I'm watching the vector, the velocity vector, as it drops below the horizon, I know I'm going down now, so I don't want to just drop uncontrolled, because you see there as I applied collective while I was dropping, the helicopter wanted to roll over, so if I'd have done that very low down and yanked on the collective, it would have just rolled over, and that's no good. So as soon as I start going down, I now want to control my rate of descent with the collective and just tilting the helicopter back. I don't want too much speed. And again, I'm just using the, veloc uh, the, the collective to position the velocity vector just past the helipad. And then at the last minute, I'm just going to flare a little bit of power. And then, oops, that was uh, a bit too much flare. And a bit too high of a drop. Uh, but just as you hit the ground, uh, just 
took the helicopter back, just about half collective, just to slow you down that last little bit, and then uh, ease off the collective, and you should just drop down quite easy. So there we go. There's a few um, tips for me to flying the uh, for flying the AH-94. Uh, I'm sorry if there's any terminology that I've got wrong with anything on the hood, anything like that. Um, if there is anything I've got wrong, please do let me know. I, I am very appreciative of constructive criticism. Uh, I do like to learn myself, so please do pass on uh, what you know. I do appreciate it. Um, but with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.